All right, before we get on with the video, I wanna ask that you please drop a like. YouTube has been suppressing my channel lately. It used to be that 80% of my viewers were not subscribed, so basically people who saw it and recommended. Now that number is only 40%, so need a like to help push this out, so it would be greatly appreciated. But anyways, on with the topic of the video. The Pistons are off to a very rough start. They have a 4-9 and nine record, and they are below the Bulls, Cavs, and Hornets, who they just lost to a Malik Monk game winner to, in the standings, despite being much more talented than all of those teams, and probably better coached as well. What's really weird about this start is that there really isn't anyone directly to blame. Drummond is having probably the best statistical year of his career so far, averaging 19 points and 17 rebounds a game. Derrick Rose has been fantastic for them, averaging 18 points and 6 assists on 54% shooting. Luke Kennard is having a career year with 17 a game, shooting 41% from 3 on 7 attempts, finally becoming that JJ Redick type of player that he's supposed to be. Also getting 4 assists a game because he is more versatile than JJ Redick offensively. Langston Galloway, who is pretty much seen as a whatever player on this team, is doing amazing. T him, Tony Snell, and Markeith Morris are all hitting their threes at a high percentage. 46% on 5 attempts for Langston Galloway, 46% on 5 attempts for Tony Snell, and 41% on 4 attempts for Markeith Morris, who was originally seen as pretty much a stretch 4 that can't shoot. But he's been shooting well this year. And Christian Wood, who they picked up from the Pelicans, has been very good off of the bench. Wood was someone that I thought a team should take a crack at, and the Pistons were the one to do so. He played really well with the Pelicans in like 15 games last year, put up like 17 points per game. So I was glad to see him get an opportunity, and he's played really good for them as a pick and roll big man. Also, shooting well from three on limited attempts, albeit. Injuries have been the only real factor here. Blake has only played in two games, Rose has only played in eight games, and Reggie Jackson has only played in two games. And speaking on Reggie Jackson, I did want to say something about him, and that is that people need to stop disrespecting him. People are acting like he is just a straight-up bad player and the Pistons are better off with him not playing. Derrick Rose is definitely better. I do think Derrick Rose should still be a bench player because he wants to win a six man of the year award and i do think he's best in that role when reggie jackson comes back i do believe he should start reggie's a good playmaker became a surprisingly good shooter last year 37 percent on like seven attempts a game uh all right defensively i mean he's not great he's definitely overpaid but i don't know why people shit on this guy so much he's an all right point guard Far from my first pick for my starting point guard spot, but also not my last. So him being out is important to this team because he is a solid starting level player. And when you're as lacking in depth and talent outside of the top two that this Pistons team is, you need that guy. So he is a factor here. Even if this team was fully healthy and even if they were, let's say, 500, what are we doing here? Like, where is this team going? Now, I think it's fair to say that the Detroit Pistons as an organization have been pretty okay with just being a mediocre team. I think they showed showcased that by trading for Blake Griffin. As soon as they traded for Blake Griffin, I was like, yeah, well, they're okay being a six seed every year. I guess they've just accepted that. Uh, but even if that's the case, even then, I don't know that this team can be that good consistently for the next couple of years because it seems like things are ready to fall apart. Things are in place for them to uh, be that way. Even if this season can be saved for what? The eighth seed? I get I get it if that's what they're cool with, but I still think that's a mistake. And my, and my view of basketball and how teams should operate is either be contending for a championship or be building up to eventually contend for a championship. Either rebuild, be in the process of getting towards a championship in an in-between area, or be a championship contender. If you are neither of those three things, you are wasting your time. And the reason I say that this team looks like it's about to fall apart regardless 
Andre Drummond is 26 years old and he is in the last year of his contract. This is the first time that he's going to be an unrestricted free agent. He's the best rebounder in the league, became a pretty solid defensive player, great in the pick and roll. He's going to get a decent bag, especially with a very lacking in depth free agency class. He's also said that he's looking forward to free agency, which pretty much implies that he is either going to want to get a shit ton of money from Detroit or he is looking forward to getting out of there because he wouldn't say I'm looking forward to free agency if he's planning on just coming back to a team friendly deal on the same team. Another factor here is that Blake Griffin is 30 years old and he has shown throughout his entire career that he is very injury prone. It's an unfortunate truth that Blake Griffin has injury problems and as he gets older you can only expect them to get worse. Derrick Rose is not going to get much better than he currently is and he is also another injury concern. You can never really count on him playing any more than 60 games during a regular season and there's always the playoffs as well if they made it there. And everyone besides for Christian Wood and Luke Kennard are pretty much what they are with no realistic chance of getting that much better. I think Luke Kennard has a chance to become a solid score in the NBA but nothing crazy. Christian Wood a really good backup big man and that's about the depth of their young talent. Everyone else on this team is either established or just bad. Shout out to Thon Maker. So what we have here is a team full of veterans, uh, not a whole lot of depth, a very poor bench unit, and I also see a team that's pretty much hit its ceiling. Give, you know, Luke Kennard two years to be better, but maybe Blake Griffin's not as good when he's 32 and has dealt with more injury. Uh, maybe, you know, I'd imagine Andre Drummond pretty much stagnate from where he is now. So it really does not seem like this team is getting any better, and even if the players that I don't think have much more farther to go go farther even then this team needs a lot more to be a even borderline contender so in my opinion they need to rebuild now the good thing here is that they do have enough assets to actually get a solid head start on their rebuild that's one of the things i liked about the chicago bulls is that they had a star player going into their rebuild that they were able to trade whereas you think as a team like the philadelphia 76ers they really had drew holiday who was injury prone and all they got out of him was nerland's noel it's nice to have a couple of established players that you can turn into young assets or draft picks and luckily enough for the Detroit Pistons they do have that it's not like they're starting from scratch although they could be if they keep holding out which is a thing we'll get into in a second I only really have two trades that are really big here and I think are the ones that make the most sense for both sides uh, for how they could start their rebuild we have Blake Griffin to the Portland Trailblazers for Zach Collins and Anthony Simmons uh, I'm sure many of you want me to talk about Carmelo Anthony to the Blazers and here's where I'm gonna say it that's not going to work out because Carmelo Anthony is not that good anymore I don't even know if I'd say he's good anymore so he's not the solution to all of Portland's problems Portland needs some more bigs because Zach Collins and Yusuf Nurkic are out until at least 2020 uh they also need some more scoring outside of Damon CJ if Rodney Hood is your third best score on your team that is a concern he should be the best score you have off of your team's bench not your third not your go-to option after Damon CJ and the Pistons would get back Zach Collins and Anthony Simmons as well as probably a first round pick. Zach Collins has potential to be a very versatile big man. Uh, not really great at anything but also not bad at anything. And Anthony Simmons has a lot of potential to be even I would say a star level player. Anthony has a great jump shot. He has great size. He could play either guard position. He has a great handle. Knows how to attack the basket. He's shown really good signs for the Portland Trailblazers so far this year. And I do think he had I do think he has star potential and it's not really going anywhere in Portland. So you might as well, you know, give him a shot. Then another trade I have is one that I did in my Warriors rebuild, which was Andre Drummond to the Warriors for D'Angelo Russell. Like I said, Drummond is on the first year of his deal. I do feel like because of that, this trade might not be possible because the Warriors might wait to trade D'Lo for the offseason. And because they're tanking, they're also probably going to be looking at James Wiseman, who is a center. So trading for Drummond does not make as much sense there. Now that I'm saying it out loud, it does not make as much sense for the Warriors to pull off this move. But maybe if they're not looking at James Wiseman, I have heard some concerns about him as a prospect, then they could make this trade for Drummond, re 
sign him in the offseason, bring in some draft prospect to go along with Curry, Clay, and Drummond, fill out their bench with some role players, bring back Andre Iguodala. And I think that's a solid rebuild for them right there. And then from the Pistons' perspective, D'Angelo Russell is a young star. I am hesitant on how good I actually think he can be, especially with his inability to draw fouls, because I do think he's holding himself back as a scorer, and he can never be that efficient because he is afraid to attack the basket, and because he is pretty much entirely his game is pretty much entirely based around jump shots. However, He's a young star. I still think he can be an all-star level player in the Eastern Conference. So it's not the end of the world. Also a good playmaker. And then Derrick Rose, I think you could get a first round pick from a contending team. Maybe even a young player from them. Uh, I think maybe like the San Antonio Spurs, you get a first round pick from them. And like Luka Samanich or whatever the hell his name is pronounced. Uh, there is that option. Uh, I do think you can get something for him, and there's no real reason to keep him at the age that he is, so make that trade. And then, for what the young guys they already have right now, Luke Kennard, like I said, is solid. Uh, if they made these trades, D'Angelo Russell, I think, is a solid young star. Anthony Simmons has potential to be really damn good. Zach Collins is a versatile big man. And I think Christian Wood has some potential. He's young. He's athletic. He's pretty well-versed offensively. He can grab some rebounds. And I think that's a decent young core. It's a bad roster, and it's not a good fit. But you could get a high draft pick, land James Wiseman, Cole Anthony, or LaMelo Ball. I do realize we're stacking up a lot of point guards at this point, but I do think D'Lo can play the two, and Cole Anthony and LaMelo Ball can both play off of D'Lo and vice versa, so that wouldn't be a problem. Anthony Simmons would be the odd man out there, but maybe he ends up being better than D'Lo or Cole Anthony or LaMelo Ball, or they draft someone else. Uh, those are really the only three names that I've been hearing about, so... That's who I'm talking about. There's a lot of point guards in this draft, so they might want to rather than take on Anthony Simmons, take Nazir Little, but I would probably prefer Simmons just because he has a way higher ceiling and I don't think Nazir Little is actually that good. But you get a decent young core there and you just go from there. They can start a decent rebuild with the assets they have. But a year from now, Drummond will probably be gone, Blake will be even older, Rose will be older, and the roster won't be any closer to contending. We're really at a critical point here where you can cash in on your assets now, or you can be like the Memphis Grizzlies and all you get back from Marcus Saul is Jonas Valanciunas. So, rebuild, Pistons. I guess that's my message. But that's the end of this video. Please be sure to like and subscribe for more NBA content like this and cue the outro music.